What's going on everybody? Today's video is going to be an overview on the all new Wired Predator e-bike, the dual motor powerhouse, 9,000 plus watts, 60 plus miles per hour on this power performance bicycle that Wired calls it. This is the sample bike I got my hands on for testing. The production models I believe are due into port in a couple weeks, but while we wait, I wanted to give you some more close up looks at this bike so you can see all the bits and pieces and just kind of go over the dimensions and specs. If you're waiting on one, you might want to know some of this information. So let's take a look at it. All right, well, as I mentioned, incredible performance out of this power performance bike from Wired Dual Motors. I had this thing peaking over 9,000 watts and going over 64 miles an hour. Just absolutely insane for a bicycle. Right now, it's retailing at $3,699, plus you gotta pay for shipping. But that is a lot of power for the money. I don't know of anything else really like this on the market right now. This is the Predator. This is pretty much top of the food chain. But let me give you some close-ups on everything. Let's start with the big money items, man. The powertrain. So in the front wheel, you've got a 1500 watt continuous motor. It's a hang tie motor, 1500 watt continuous, and then the peak is gonna be over 3500 because it's running off a 45 amp controller and that's getting the power from 72 volt batteries which charge to 84 volts so you're running a lot of power just in the front motor the rear motor is even bigger this is a exclusive to wired motor hang tech it says on it hang tie same company this is a 2000 watt continuous motor that's going to peak over 5000 watts and it's running off a 65 amp controller and of course the 72 volt battery system just really an insane amount of power running through this bike. I think I probably still have my stuff saved in the display. It saves your max speeds and power and everything. So let's go take a look at that. So max speed, 64.8 miles an hour and 9,254 watts. Just crazy, craziness. Your battery packs are 72 volt. They charge to 84 volts. In the frame here, you've got a 20 amp hour. And then in the rear rack, you have a 15 amp hour. They both weigh around 18 pounds. They're very heavy battery packs. And this is a very heavy bike. This thing weighs 163 pounds. I think when I took the batteries out, it was like 126 pounds. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna be lifting this bike or loading this thing onto a truck, loading it on a bike rack, it is very heavy. The batteries are made with Samsung S cells, which are a high discharge cell. When you, when you got a bike like this, it's pulling so much power out of the battery packs at once. You got to have a battery management system that can handle that huge discharge rate so they use the high discharge cells you can even run this bike off of one battery pack if you wanted to remove the rear rack battery and just run off the frame battery you could that one battery can handle it so the powertrain on this bike is just absolute insanity i believe it's a combined 330 newton meters of torque and my plan is to showcase that torque for you in a later video but let's continue our walk around. All the 72 volt bikes from Wired get upgrades to the wheel and tire package. They get these different tires, which I've seen them called a bunch of different names. These ones say Cool Ride on them. I've seen them called Black Cats, Heb Allscape. They're all that same tread pattern. And I believe they're all made by the brand Innova, which I've heard of before. And they're a really thick tire that's supposed to be able to handle the higher speed that this thing is capable of. There's no speed rating on the sidewall, so I, I don't know what it's actually capable of. But I have installed these tires on other bikes. They are very heavy duty tires. They're about double the weight of a typical e-bike tire. The 72 volt bikes also get updated rims. They are double wall rims and they get thicker gauge spokes. I believe these are 12 gauge on the front, but the rear is upgraded even further. These spokes are massive. These are 10 gauge spokes on the back. There is a lot of power in these motors and wheels, so I'm glad to see them make those upgrades to the spokes and also the rims and the tires. This Predator bike is the only one that gets the double crown forks. These are X-Show, I think it says right there on that rubber piece, X-Show forks, double crown. It's an inverted front fork, so you know, the part that compresses is down here. Behind this aluminum fork cover, I'll call it, and that has the purpose of, I guess, protecting the fork, but also it serves as the fender mounting point. So this is a solid piece of like aluminum. It's bolted in right here on the fork. And then up here, you can see the fender is attached to that. And the fender is super duper sturdy, like really, really sturdy on there, which is great. The last Predator, previous version, the fender was flopping all over the place. This is way, way more stable. Great design on the fender. The only note I gave Wired was it's the clearance here is pretty close. I think they're gonna try to raise this up on production models. So you get these aluminum fenders, both front and rear. You get a headlight, tail light, brake light, no turn signals on the bike though. Another feature Wired starting to add to all of their bikes now going forward is this front mounting 
plate here where you can mount a front basket or rack. But as you might notice on this one, you wouldn't be able to use anything there because the forks are going to hit into it as you turn. So on all the other bikes where they don't have this section of the fork, you're going to mount your front rack there, which they're in developing right now. For the Predator bike, they are going to make a front rack for it, but it's going to have to clip onto the forks in order to mount it. So be looking for that in the future from Wired, a front basket that clips onto the forks for the, specifically for the Predator bike. For the brakes on the Predator, you've got these Gemma or Gemma brakes, however you want to say it. Wired uses these on all their bikes. It's a 203 rotor on the front and four piston caliper. And in my time spent with this bike, I've got a lot of miles on it. The braking system has worked fine for me. It has been able to bring me to a stop even from higher speeds. I weigh 180 pounds, but I did mention in my last video that I was hoping they would be a little bit stronger or larger on the brakes because if you think about it there could be much heavier riders on here carrying more cargo i was carrying no no cargo and you've got a 165 pound bike that could be trying to stop from 60 miles an hour so here is my advice just be smart about your braking with, with when you're on the predator okay if you're doing high speeds you're carrying a heavy load you know know that you're basically still on bicycle brakes on this thing so be smart guys really manage your stopping distances and be careful with all this power and speed all right, here's some more sizing information for you because this thing is a juggernaut. The minimum seat height from ground to top of seat is 34 inches. Your standover height to right here is 28 and a half inches, ground to there. It's an 18 inch frame, I believe, because I took the measurement from the center here up to where the seat post goes in. So 18 inch frame, I believe, if that's how you take that measurement. The rear rack from the ground to the top of the rack that you're gonna have to swing your leg over is just under 34 inches. It's like 33 and three quarters high. The rear rack itself is 19 and a half inches long and it's seven inches wide. Your wheelbase on this is extra long as well. From axle to axle, it's 53 inches. Important to take note of that too, because that could be longer than some of those bike racks out there. I own bike racks that this thing won't fit on. And the overall length from end to end is 82 and a half inches. It's also quite tall. From the ground to the top of the grip is about 49 and a half inches. So this thing's over four feet tall and almost seven feet long. Just a massive bicycle. The gearing up front is a 56 tooth chainring. Spin it around, you can see right there, 56T. And it is a double sided chainring aluminum. On the back, you've got this uh, big, huge gear here on the back. This is a 34 tooth for the largest cog and the smallest is 11. So this guy right here, when you're in first gear, will allow you to basically pedal this bike without power, which you're not gonna wanna do that, but if you had to do it, you could. And when you're in the seventh gear, you still have feeling in the pedals at high speed. I was able to pedal even at over 50 miles an hour. Past like 52, 53 miles an hour, I didn't really want to pedal, but I still had feeling in the pedals. The Predator's got a four-link rear suspension with an adjustable DNM air shock. So right here is your air inlet. You know, you can adjust the air pressure in the chamber. The blue switch allows you to flip on the fly, basically from the softest to a little bit stiffer to the firmest setting. Flip of a switch, very convenient. And then the red dial around that is the rebound adjustment. So very adjustable suspension. I've had no trouble with that. It's nice and soft. More updates at Wired made to all of the bikes, all of the models got this new rear rack mounting design where it bolts straight through the frame. There's no more tabs welded on and then, you know, attaching into that, they go right through the frame in all these different places. So a much sturdier rear rack. Now I'm gonna spin this bike around into the light. A couple things I wanna show you on the other side. And the first thing is right here, the Predator is equipped with a torque sensor, a true torque sensor. You got to put pressure on the pedals in order to get the power out of the bike and have the motor engage. But it also has the capability of being programmed to be a cadence sensor. So if you don't want to have to push on the pedals, you just want to turn them and get the power, you can set it to cadence. So it can do either or. Very cool feature. Not something I see all the time. It's on a couple other bikes, but Wired has now added this to all of their bikes. Your choice, torque or cadence. Now the other thing I want to show you is this. Look at this motor plug, which is absolutely enormous. I brought with me a little plug adapter here so you can see the size of a regular motor plug compared to this thing. It is like twice the size, even the wire. I mean, if you look at the thickness of the wire, it's like double the thickness. So, I mean, that's, that's because you're running so much power. You got 84 volts, 65 amp controllers, your wiring and your plugs and everything need to be able to handle that. So, I mean, they just have this massive, massive motor plug. It's like comically large, <laughs> but hey, 
I'm glad it's there. I'm glad it's there so you're not frying the system. All right, what else on this side? You got your charging port right here so you can charge on the bike if you need to, or you can remove the battery out. Same thing in the rear. You can put the key in here and unlock it. And you know, they got look like a grab handle here now. You can pull that out or you can just charge right there while it's on the bike. Got your tail light. Um, we can take a look at the controls. So right hand twist throttle, seven speed thumb shifter, your display screen. They give you a bell. You got your control panel here. And then this is your switch to control the motor engagement. So in number one, you're in front motor. Two is all wheel drive. Three is rear motor. So you can select how many motors you want going at the flip of a switch. And if you want to further customize the power delivery on the Predator, this display screen will allow you to program in about anything you can think of. You can independently control the power output and delivery of each wheel, really fine tuning this to match exactly how you want it to perform. Let's head back to the garage. I'll show you all the programming. All right, we'll show you some of the programming that this display is capable of. First off at the top of the screen there, you'll see that little bicycle with the green wheel. The rear wheels lit up because the three-way switch is in the third position. If I switch it to the middle position, shows your all wheel drive and then position one shows front wheel drive. So that's your indicator of your drive mode. Just letting you know how many wheels are active right now. You also see it says torque real big right there because I'm in torque sensor mode, not cadence. So that's where it shows that. If you switch to cadence, it'll be cadence there really big. But to get into settings, you just hold down the set key and that'll take you into the main menu. General settings is gonna be wheel size, speed, needs, all your units and everything that's in the bike. Um, I've got the wheel size set to 29. That's the highest it'll go. If you try to go higher, it just goes to five. So 29 inch on the wheel size, speed unit, obviously miles per hour for me, I like that. But you can change all that here. Motor temp, that's gonna, sh you know, if you want the motor temperature to show or not, I don't know why you wouldn't, so I leave mine on. Battery display, do you want it in percentage or in voltage? I usually keep it in voltage. What else is in here? The light mode, if you want the lights to flicker or flash or just remain steady, I keep mine in normal mode. But just basic stuff in here. Do you want cruise control? Yes or no? I have it activated, but I never really use it. The display sleep timer, how long before it times out? And that's about it. So let's get back out of there. We'll go to the advanced settings. This is what you really want to see. So in here, you got max speed. I've got it maxed out 99 kilometers an hour. Highest I've seen this thing goes about 64 miles an hour, which is plenty fast. The class setting, this will allow you to switch between class one, two, three, unlimited. I keep it unlimited because everything then is just wide open. You can make any change you want to this bike. If you put it in class one or class two, the bike will automatically set all the parameters to coincide with that e-bike class setting. So it's a quick way to switch between classes if you're interested. Now, front motor pedal assist. This tells it if you want the front motor to go with your pedal assist or not. I don't, I don't see the need. I deactivated mine, but you can activate it here. The drive mode is gonna be where you pick torque or cadence for your pedal assist sensor. I like torque. Next one is how many different levels of pedal assist do you want? I've got it set for nine right now. And then the next one down shows you the exact percentage of power delivered in every level. I mean, holy cow, this is really customizable. You can go percent by percent to set this up to match what you want perfectly. So I'm gonna get back out of that. Next thing down, throttle enable. And this will let you turn the throttle off and on in each individual motor. So if you want the throttle to work only with your rear motor, you can do that here. So if I go into front, I can pick, do I want it enabled or not? So I keep it enabled. I do want the front motor to go with my throttle, but you can turn it off here if you want. Under that, you've got throttle follow, and this is just a yes or no. If you pick yes, your throttle power will be limited by what your pedal assist level is. I don't want that. I just want full throttle all the time. So I leave mine on no. Under that throttle percentage, where you can put the exact percentage you want out of each motor. So on the rear motor, I've got it set to 100. I want all the power out of the rear motor, but on the front motor, I think right now I've got it set up for 50. Yeah, I have 50% power when I hit the throttle on the front motor. But you can customize it to whatever you want. You can put that at 100, but trust me, this bike is absolutely nuts when you do that. So I'm gonna leave mine at 50 for the moment. Start strength, again, individual wheel. The front motor I have on three, that's the slow start setting, all right? And the rear wheel, I keep at zero. That is fast start. So I get a hard hit on the rear motor and a more of a gradual on the front. I like that setup. Gives you the best chance of having less wheel spin. And that's all in these menus. 
So you can return back to the main menu. If you hit trip clear under here, it will clear all of the data as far as the mileage, the average speeds, average watts, max speeds, max watts, all that gets zeroed out right here if you wanna do that. I'm gonna leave mine in there for now. But really, a very highly customizable bike. This is great. You can do pretty much anything you want with the power delivery in the Predator. So if you're someone who's waiting on delivery of a Predator or you're considering buying this bike, I hope you found this information helpful. If I missed something, some size or dimension or something you got a question on, drop it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer as quickly as I can. And now I'm going to go out and try to do a high speed range test on this bike because a lot of you have been asking about that. How long is this mega power going to last? I'm going to go do that now and then hopefully get that video to you soon. See you in the next one.